Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be exploring creating a custom function in Unreal 4.26. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and launch it. We will also be touching on data types and kind of reviewing blueprints and just kind of playing around with the creating blueprints because I think they're very important to understanding Unreal. So here we are. We're just going to create a game and we'll go next. And it's just a blank project and no starter content. And I'm just going to call this counter two or three create project. I personally believe Unreal is the way uh, wave of the future. As I'm exploring Blueprint, I realize that it's basically, literally, you're basically coding in C++, but they've created this additional visual scripting language that takes away the actual coding part. And instead of coding, you're pulling in nodes and connecting wires. So I want to show you something really interesting here. If we come in here to Atmosphere Fog, let's delete it. Let's delete the light source. Yes. Let's delete the sky sphere. Let's delete the skylight. Let's delete this. <laughs> and look, it's still lit. Isn't that interesting? I'm not exactly sure. I got to figure out why. What's actually lighting this? Is this a radioactive or is that luminosity somewhere? What is lighting that? I'm just curious because there's no light. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So anyway, here we are. Like I said, I like to see this window here just so I know where I am. And we're in the content directory. Come over here and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new folder. And we'll just call this BP underscore projects because that's what we're going to be messing around with a lot is blueprints. I believe understanding blueprints is the key to success in Unreal. Now we're going to click inside this folder. Now we're going to right click and go to blueprint class and we'll click actor. And now you can see down here it's highlighted and we'll just call this counter because that's what basically we're creating. Although we are exploring some things in the blueprint and uh, data types and stuff. So once that's created, we'll just double click it and it's going to bring up the blueprint editor. One thing you can do is click on this tab and just dock it up here so then you can just jump between your programs that makes it a lot easier okay so here we are and the first thing we're going to do is we're on the event graph and we're going to say we're event begin play which is our trigger to start everything we're just going to drag that onto the scene or double click it and it brings extra stuff in there actually so we're just going to left click and drag and delete that and then we've got this right here and we're just going to scoot that over to the left when this turns to the plus sign we're going to click and drag off of it and what we're going to search for is the timeline and it comes up down here you double click that and it brings up our timeline if you double click this it takes you into the timeline and if you come here you can add a float track so you click there and this creates a float track if you come right about there, right click, you can add a keyframe. So we add a keyframe. You can see the value up here. The time is not quite zero. So we're just going to type in a zero, but our value is zero. So then we're going to scroll wheel out here a little bit. We're going to come right about to there to the end of this. It's five seconds long. And we're going to right click and add a keyframe. And if we click on it again, it shows you we're not quite right at five. So we can just put a five there and our value here. We want that to be a hundred. And we go enter when you do that the graph literally goes off the chart so if you click left click on this and hit f you can see the whole graph now what's going to happen is this is going to go across the timeline and from zero to five seconds and it's going to be generating all these values which are actually decimal values or float values. and so we're going to want integers for that so i'm just going to click save on that and then we're going to jump back into our event graph now you noted with that float track added it has a new track here. So when it turns into the plus sign, we're going to just right click off of that and we want to round that. So this timeline is going to be generating a float value or a decimal value. And we want to convert that into an integer value, which is not a decimal. It's a whole number. And so what we can do is we type in type in round and this is comes up and this is going to basically convert our float value to an integer value. Then what we want to do is when you see the plus sign is click and left click off and we want to convert that integer value into a string or text value. So we go to text and it's right here. And so this is going to can basically convert our integer into a string, which will be a text. So we're going to stop there. Let me left click and drag and we'll just scoot that all over like that. Okay. So we're done here to create a, a function. And that's one of the things we're, this is just a very basic function. We're going to come over here and click where it says plus function. And we have our new function here. It takes an input and an output and a lot of it's over here. We can give it a name if we want over here and we can just call this text output. And here, oops, let me click back on here to add an input here. 
This is what's interesting to me, okay? When I talk about the visual scripting being one step above, just literally one step above C++ programming, because if you come over here and click, here are all your data types. Basically, these are your all of your standard programming data types. You've got string, text, float, integer, bytes, booleans, and stuff like that. But we don't have to type in anything. We can just click and drag and, you know, so it's, it's C++ for dummies. <laughs> So we want a text variable right there. And we can rename this if we want, but we're not going to mess with that. Now, the other thing we need to do is we actually need to add the text renderer. So we're going to come here to where it says add component and we're going to go type in text render and it comes in right there. Now, when we drag this over, that's going to create a reference to it. And if we click and drag off of this, we can look for set text and it's right here. Okay, and now this is only, all this is gonna need is this going in and our data going in. Okay, this goes in and that goes in, right? And this is basically our function. So we can compile it and save it and make sure there's no errors with that. Now we can just jump back into our event graph here and all we gotta do is our function is right here, our text output, and I can click and drag this over here. Now I don't need to set a target because the target is already set. All this needs is data, which is here, and then it needs an event, which is here. And that's all we have to do. And then if I hit compile and I hit save, we've completed our script with a function. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back over into our main project here. And here's our blueprint that we've created now, the blueprint, the counter click it over here and drag it onto the scene. Now you might not be able to see it, but it says text right there. So what you can do is if you hit E, you can rotate this, I think 180 degrees. Oops, I do. Rotate it 180 degrees. That, you can hit R, you can scale this up kind of big like that, that, and if I did everything right, I should be able to hit play and it'll run through the numbers. Now, what's it doing? It's doing it over there. I think I got to get rid of the player start. So let me escape out of this. Let me get rid of this player start. I think it's messing me up. I'll go back to the counter, the floor. Let's see how to get on this F. Okay. So let me just reposition myself here. Kind of weird. X out, it went too far. I'm on the floor, right? I'm on the floor. I want to go through the scene. So I'm having the hardest time today. Now, let me try it again. There we go. And that's our basic counter using visual scripting language. So you can see all the possibilities that are available to you once you get a handle on the visual scripting, just to create something really simple like that. Okay, now I wanna show you one other thing when you're working with the scripting. If we double click on this, we can go back into our, let's say you're working on something and let's say we don't have this function set up. So if I just click on this, I can delete it. But let's say I just wanted, I'm just curious if my script is working. What I can do is I can drag out of this and I can type in print text right here. And this will print to the green for me. So it needs an event, so I gotta plug that in too. But if I compile this and save this and I jump back into our program and I hit play, you'll see the data is created over here on the side. So it's just a way to kind of quick and dirty show that if you're getting the correct output from your script. So that's the print test function. And believe it or not, that's all I had for today. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And I will talk to you next time.